lots of uh, tourists do cause problems. They grab geisha, they try and take awful selfies and degrade, you know, these these geisha quietly uh, wandering around in between shops and whatnot. Uh, to the point that you, you get fined 10,000 yen if you do take photos without permission. Wow. Hello and welcome to the Abroad in Japan podcast, probably the best way of learning about life in Japan without actually being in Japan. I'm your host, Chris Broad, and we're joined, as always, by England's top Japan enthusiast, Mr. Pete Donaldson himself. Pete, how the devil are you doing? What's going on? Hello, Christopher. I am in fine fettle on the... It's just, I'm just looking forward to bloody summer. I just... I know I always talk about the weather, but I am looking for... I can feel it in my bones. Um, I'm starting to wear fewer layers, and it's going to be... 2024 is going to be the year of the... I don't know, a Bronze Japan podcast? I, don't know, I, don't know. I got excited. Jump in that one. I don't know. I've been watching... Um, there's like an interesting sort of uh, sort of raft of people on like YouTube mm. who will just like clip up streamers. And that's all they do. They just clip Put it, big money clip, made. put it up. Put it up. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize that was a that was allowed. I mean, it's, it's not really tra- transformational, area. is it? It's 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 not um it's not transformational. It's not uh it, is it helpful for people to have their clips out there um because um, they don't have the time or the um need to sort of do it themselves. Well, like, Connor has quite a lot of you know clippers. Uh, yeah, and you know people do Connor's make money clippers. Out of it. Well, the, the clips get sometimes hundreds of thousands of views and mm. can make hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Mm. So it's not ideal, but it also helps sort of propagate the legend of the streamer yes. a little bit, right? Yeah, um, okay. So it's kind of a weird relationship. Most streamers I talk to don't seem to care too much, mm. um, but some clippers go too far and literally clip everything and... Um, mm. Yeah. cannibalize the actual content so i mean i would yeah. say that um i i there, there was a clip with um where connor was because because obviously you've been roundly criticized in the past for the things you put connor through by connor and his fans uh <laughs> but but connor Never. um was basically saying that he uh walks around with the um streamer uh, shibuya cow or cow shibuya I don't know. yeah anyway um uh it, it was like proper funny and sh- and she i think every young male streamer or collection of male streamers should have like an older kind of matriarchal sort of character <laughs> on their streams to just put them in situations that they would never normally get in. Just a fucking grown up who's fucking done some shit and they just, and they're just, and they just, they don't <laughs> give a toss and they are strong and they are just um, putting these men through <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> like, and it's just so funny to sort of him go, I'm, I'm disgusted by the things that she makes me do sometimes. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm really scared. She, she'll, she'll do anything. She, she just doesn't care. And like just having this kind of like devil may care older woman on your on your stream is just, <laughs> well, it's just yeah. such a good idea. So I think you need one. We need to find we, you. Well, a we went car. to a, um, a wrestle wrestling bar last year okay with these wrestle yeah. girls it's quite famous everyone's seen this place we went there oh the famously... muscle is that the one where the muscles yes. the muscle women yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. The, the muscle girl bar and the muscle girls it's quite interesting it was fun actually i was sort mm. of uh i'd climbed a, a literal mountain that day mount a cow right i was battered i turned up and i was really out of it um because i was mm. shattered so people think i'm like shocked and afraid of this place because the camera keeps cutting to me and I'm like look like a terrified yeah. little badger like what's going on <laughs> and uh, you know Connor and Ludwig who are you know have the energy of a nuclear reactor are like all over the place being crazy <laughs> Connor's getting slapped in the face Ludwig's getting kicked in the backside I'm just sort of sitting there laughing and inter- intermittently being sm- splashed with various fluids coming out of cups and glasses <laughs> I think at one point they do like a, a sake waterfall or something, vodka waterfall. Oh, right. I can't remember. It was awful. I didn't. I can't say I enjoyed the place. The girls are really cool though, really fun. And Shibuya Kaho set that up as well. Do, and, do you? Yeah. Do, uh, yeah. They just. They just. They just. You just need. They just need someone to just sort of pull and pull. Um, do you? When you find yourself in a situation where you are with other um, creators or streams and stuff, do you kind of like take a little bit of a back seat? Because I, I find that I'm. You know, I'm. I'm quite a. Um, outgoing person in certain aspects mm. of my life but as soon as someone who's even peppier than me uh is is in my no sort of friendship group there's no one i just sort of withdraw a little bit and i'm like that person's got the stage 
let that person, you know, uh, be a dickhead for a bit. And I'd sort of withdraw a little bit. Um, and, mm. Pete, and some people who've known me for a long time sort of go, why is Pete so quiet? Is that because this guy's here? Because he's shouting. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, it probably is, actually. I, I just like, I, I just sort of withdraw a little bit. And uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just, I just do not have a strong <coughs> will, Chris. I'm an absolute beta person. <laughs> I mean, I do do have, I I have that, and I think it's more mm. like attention deficit disorder. Like, if I'm not, mm. you know, if the camera's not on me and it's not all on me, then I sort of do sort of switch off a little bit. Uh, right. I think we had that problem on the RV stream Connor did last year. Although, to be fair, I had formidable hay fever and I could barely open my eyes. I couldn't breathe mm. and I was a right mess. Um, but it was like Connor, Pete, and Ludwig, each one of them right. has more energy and charisma than anything. And, yeah, you know you can you take a back seat. You can go a bit missing. You can sort of go. I'll just be the metronome that keeps this thing on the rails. But um, yeah. the rest of you can, the rest of you can do your um, Zinedine Zidane stepovers. <laughs> well, I mean, I yeah, a few people were like, Chris is so grumpy and miserable. First of all, it's the hay fever. Second of all, you just can't keep up with those guys because <laughs> they're streamers, right? They have the energy yeah. to keep going. <laughs> And chatting it's a, it's and doing a wacky shit. It's, it is a completely different discipline, isn't it? Like you can, I can perform for like thirty seconds, and then I'm just like, I'm just spent. <laughs> I cannot, I cannot do more. That um, sounds wrong. And then, but, but streamers just just keep. They just can just keep it going. For, <laughs> yes, streamers can. Get, we're back to that um, salad cream story in uh, McDonald's last week. Oh. Um, uh, <laughs> but like I, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't keep it going. Like I, I just don't think I'd be a very good streamer because it's just you just have to keep fucking going. True, I find mm. when I'm at my best when I, it's just uh, like me and one other person because then mm. you can sort of riff off each other and bounce back and forth. When there's three, yeah. it starts to get quite complicated, and when there's four, it's a bloody nightmare. Competitive but... as well, I think. I think when you've got certainly young, young, a bit, young yeah, men, yeah. to be quite frank, like rutting stags on stream. <laughs> well, yeah, there's always got to be one top dog, right? And in the case yeah. of the and it's Shibuya, well, it's Shibuya. She's Shibuya. 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 always going to win because he's better <laughs> than the lot he is. <laughs> in the case of the wrestling, uh, the the muscle girl bar it was definitely Ludwig. Ludwig stole the show mm. there. He destroyed us on all the press ups and push ups and all the other <laughs> shit. But uh, to be fair, I climbed a mountain though, so I think I get special mm. points. I'm not here though to prop up my ego in the no. face of all the streamers. I'm here to talk about Shogun. <laughs> Have you seen Shogun yet, Pete? Have you watched it, still for the not, love of God? Still not seen Shogun, still not seen uh, the Shogun. I did see, uh, oh. I, I would say, like a similar story about um, internet stalking, uh, where a girl was basically, um, like an Essex uh, woman, was uh, basically saying that she had a ceremonial um, samurai sword that she would, because she was scared of the stalker, oh. she'd sit at home with a sword. Um, and I thought, that's, you know, very as a sword owner myself, um, inexplicably. <laughs> Uh, and quite accidentally, I thought that's a bit of me that <laughs> sitting at home Wait, with a sword. What is this then? Is this a TV show or a documentary or something? It's a TV show. It's a TV show on Netflix about um, stalkers and just absolute fucking sociopath, psychopathic um, people who just make these young women's. Uh, they they just sort of in. Um, pretend to be these young women and just create havoc, absolute havoc in their uh, in their personal lives. And it's just, it's just. You, we, I've sort of worked in industries where women are. If you have any sort of level of notoriety, they, uh, mm, mm. you just, you just automatically are a target for these absolute psychos. Um, you know, my my partner's dealt with a few in her time, and you know, I've yeah. had to get involved in certain certain periods of time, and and it's and it's um, it's heartbreaking because just women just can't have anything nice. They can't achieve. They can't excel. Because they 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 become targets, um, especially you know people yeah, who seem to be good looking. It's it's uh, it's horrific. It, it's it's horrible. Yeah, certainly YouTubers I know, you know, off the record have had all sorts of mm. terrible things happen that uh, you know make you lose faith in humanity very fast. Yeah, but we don't have a sword like you do, so you can no. at least administer justice. Sword, mate. Appropriately. It's the land of the sword. It's the land of the shogun sword. <laughs> the How is shogun, good, Chris? It's good. Yeah? It's nine million people watch the debut, I think, which is a record wow. for Hulu, whatever that is. I watched it's it on a record Plus. for 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 TV shows about fucking Japan and swords and stuff, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good time to be in Japan, isn't it? You got like uh, Tokyo Vice mm. just come out. You got Shogun, yeah. um, and a few other programs going on here. I, it's good though. Like I think a lot of people were really scared at the idea of Shogun being remade because in the nineteen eighties one. 
it's very much like white guy comes to Japan and fixes mm. Japan's problems single handedly. A bit like The Last Samurai, but in TV form. And uh, while it was very popular in the West, it didn't. Nobody watched it in Japan. It wasn't really aimed at uh, Japanese audience. Whereas Shogun mm. is supposed to be, you know, watchable wherever. And I know that it's quite popular in Japan as well because most of the language is Japanese, unlike the original, right. uh, where it was very much all English. Um, mm. But uh, it's good. I wouldn't say it's like a ten out of ten show, like early Game of Thrones or Succession. There's a few things in it that are a bit like some corners have been cut. And it looks a bit cheap at times. But for the most part, the cinematography is on point. Acting's great. Pretty cool story. Really, yeah, really excited to see where it goes. And the character... Awesome. Speaking of Connor previously, he's got... He's uh, A lot of people think he looks like the main character, John Blackthorne, who is the oh. British, the sort of British guy that turns up. The William Adams, Samurai William figure. Because Shogun's kind mm. of loosely based on history around the time of Tokugawa Ieyasu. And I can hear you... T- Typing in his name. Uh, typing away, To yeah, look yeah. it up, of ah, course. I could see. I could see. Oh, so was John Blackthorne in the original as well? Because I think... The, yeah, I'm, I think, looking so. At I think the, so. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah. Okie dokie. He's just, um, he's yeah, just I could William see Adams. That. I could see this. Yeah. William Adams, right. There you go. <laughs> but it's quite interesting watching <laughs> it, if you know the history <laughs> of like that era, seeing the, the similarities mm. and whatnot. But uh, yeah, three episodes in, really enjoying it. People are going to probably behead me for what I just said about it cutting some corners and not be like it's really good but i don't think the uh the script is like as strong as something like succession or early mm. game of thrones and we have to say the word early because what happened in game of thrones at the end was unspeakably shit to the point that everybody's kind of forgotten how very good game of thrones was um <laughs> hopefully a fate that will not befall shogun but uh, yeah check it out we'll talk about it when you go and watch it that's your homework Pete. Right. go and watch shogun well, I finished the TV show uh, One Day, which um, I was quite enjoying. So, oh yeah, just yeah. Just, just enjoyed that. She, yeah, my uh, a good friend of mine um, directed some short films, and the main the main girl, I don't I can't remember her name unfortunately, but uh, mm. she was in his short films. But yeah, really uh, cool. looks really good. The reviews are cracking for One Day. Anyway, enough of that. Let's dive in to the story of the week, and it's from George from Chicago. It says, dear. Uh, Chris and Pete, day one listener here. I wanted to share my story that happened last year while in Japan. We were travelling the Golden Route by Shinkansen, and before our long journey out of Kyoto, we decided to pick up our lunches at one of the amazing bento box convenience stores, and I wanted to try a one-cup sake for the road. Oh dear, (laughs) never a good start to any story. (laughs) Uh. As I stood before the large refrigerator, with an overwhelming amount of choices, I noticed a large man coming towards me, uh, keeping in mind I'm six foot two, my mouth went agape as I quickly realised that this man could only be a member of the Yakuza. Either that or a clever salesman with a loud floral shirt, <laughs> a loud floral shirt, <laughs> slick hair, tatties and sunglasses. He walked in with a sense of purpose as he intentionally came towards the sake refrigerator where I was standing. Without saying a word, he quickly opened the door in front of me immediately grabbed a cup, slammed the door shut and turned to me, noticing him like a star-struck weirdo. Uh, he tipped the cup my way, as if to toast a glass, and just made a short a short grunt sound, as if to tell me, this one. <laughs> Standing still and in <laughs> awe, I watched him slam his cash on the counter, without waiting in line, of course, and, <laughs> and he just walked off into the sunset like a boss. Safe to say... That even though I probably look like an idiot, I'll be damned if I didn't say that this wasn't the best cup. Uh, if, if this wasn't the best cup of sake I've ever enjoyed, and now I had an amazing story to go with it that I'll remember forever. <laughs> Have either of you had a similar experience where a badass influenced you into making a purchase? I realise British people can't say the phrase badass. 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 Got a badass. Yeah. Keep up the badass. great work. Cheers, uh, George, from Chicago. I love the way Yakuza don't queue. They just, t- like, I've seen Yakuza try to queue and they get very angry. They just sort of stand really? there and they go, they don't don't like... and like the shop staff are like, uh, uh. and I saw one shop staff in Kyoto last year uh, just not serve the Yakuza because they were busy like putting some chicken in the grill. And he went fucking ballistic. He grabbed him, he pulled him over the counter, and he took him out to the street and nearly smashed his head in. Luckily, Ian Rudd stepped in between the two and the police turned up to defuse the situation. The Yakuza Whoa. don't wait. They don't queue. That's wild. They wait for no one. I mean, that seems like a... Um, they must get so much stuff done. Awful. 
awful. Like, because it, I thought they were like in a hearts and minds kind of um, situation with the with the whole kind of PR of the Yuka, Yakuza these days. I thought they were, I thought they were like going for all of that. I just they think do have good PR. cutting in line. I mean, good. Imagine doing that in Britain. The Yakuza would be over in days. <laughs> Yeah, Yamaguchi, I don't go, I'm going to beat you, I'm going to fill you in, mate. Because <laughs> you just jump in the queue. It's what we do best. God damn it. What, Makes whatever, there's natural, whatever there's natural disaster, the Yak is a sigh, a, a relief, I think, because they jump in there, they hand out a few bentos, and then they write 500 articles about all the great stuff they've about done. About how good they are, right. Uh, um, very good PR. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I was once in a... Um, I mean, what I would say is that with the um, fridge... With, full of like one cup and stuff like surely there's only one one cup sake are there alternative products that have like different kinds of sake because one cup is one cup isn't it like it's it's an iconic um you know legendary product that is disgusting and you shouldn't Awful. drink it or uh, but like they only come in different sizes don't they the old yamas is it yamazaki i can't remember but like the the the, the one cup sake it's like a blue mm. sort of clear um glass kind of uh, cup with it it's uh, it's astonishingly bad <laughs> it's really bad and like there are different variations there's like a red one there's like a carton with the you know oh, a, a picture of a right? devil on it and uh right yeah i wonder what it was though you know sometimes think, there's like artisanal I... like artisans one cup sake but i've never had mm. one that i've gone oh that's quite good i'll have that again that never happens it always tastes like something that came out of a car like car paint stripper car cleaner or yeah. something if you Awful. if you're ever if you ever want to know a little bit about sake there's a good book by a guy called brian ashcraft who i went for a drink with him at once in new york city maybe los angeles can't remember it doesn't matter um but a uh he sort of said that um people criticize one cup for being a piece of shit and it is a piece of shit but it's introduced so many people into drinking sake so it's a really nice kind of like entrance to oh, i'm to, not to buying that no Fuck off! That's, that's absolute nonsense, right? If I'm like, what was your right? Trying what to introduce someone drink? into wine, and I'm like, just some like fermented strawberry jam and grapes and some shit. I drink that, and they down it. it just and get, he just said it sick. gets a bad rap needlessly because it has introduced a lot of people to um to to sake. Who wouldn't usually sort of bother right. drinking it? Would you say that um right. what was the first drink you had when you were a, like a, a child? Like for me, it was like little stubby Belgian beers. Um, that was very big. The booze yeah, cruise, actually, the, yeah. the kind of relaxation of the tax. We used to have little, um, tiny little Belgian beers that you'd buy in France and, and bring them over. Or, or you, certainly your mates, mum and dad would. We never went to France, but um, whether Nick had ladies dance, I hear. Uh, but yeah, you'd have these little sort of stubby stubby cans. And like, that, that, that's not a great kind of introduction to anything. It's disgusting. <laughs> I mean, I I had that actually when I was a kid, and I was physically sick, and it put me off beer to yeah, this day. Exactly. I um, but I don't think no, I don't think one cup sake has introduced people to sake it because when you taste it, you're like, I never want to have this again. Mm. It's, like, it's no like way. Mixed, like kind people of like, like that was awful. With it, isn't it? It, it's just, it seems un, it seems needlessly strong. <laughs> I don't know. It's I don't know. Bad. It's 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 weird. But um, yeah, I was once in an off license in uh, on Rock Park in Lon- in London, that there London, and here uh, a man came in and said, uh, "Can I get a four pack of of beer, six pack of beer?" And uh, the guy goes, uh, "Well, we got these, we got these," and he goes, um, "He goes, I don't want any Fosters. I'm a Heine man." <laughs> And he just wanted Heineken. And from that day forward, if I had the opportunity to drink a Heineken, I would drink a Heineken because I also want to be a Heine man. He was so cool (laughs) for saying that. And he, 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 yeah, he picked up a a six-pack of Heine and left. I do like I imagine I imagine good. being a Heine man um, in America is a little bit like being the booty man, isn't it? <laughs> the wrestler, the booty man. Count me in. I, even I like Heineken mm. and I don't do beer. But mm. all fun aside, not such a great week oh, for you stopping foreign all the fun. Oh. No fun. Fun is over. No fun. Uh, Kyoto mm. has banned tourists from the Geisha district uh, over out of control behaviour. Uh, which is annoying mm. because I was in Kyoto like last week in the yeah. Geisha district. And if you go down there, it's a beautiful place. Love it so much for strolling around it and wandering around aimlessly. There's a magic to the area there that, uh, you know, you just don't feel in other parts of Kyoto. They've managed to keep something. But there's mm. lo- lots of uh, tourists do cause problems. They grab Geisha. They try and take awful selfies and degrade, you know, these these Geisha quietly. Uh, wandering around in between shops and whatnot, uh, to the point that you you get fined ten thousand yen 
if you do take photos without permission down certain right. streets. But Kyoto's taken it a step further this week. Uh, Phyllis and Pete, what's going on in Kyoto? Yeah, I mean, starting April this year, Kyoto will be banning tourists from the alleyways and streets where Geisha and Maiko, uh, Mirko live and work due to the ever-increasing amounts of photography and cases of harassment. Uh, as you say, back in 2019, local authorities did roll out a, an on-the-spot fine for tourists bothering Geishas. Uh, people getting chased down the street. Geishas were getting chased down private streets in the district, photographing them without their consent and touching their elaborate wigs. And I hate people touching my elaborate wigs, to be honest. I've got a, an Amy Winehouse beehive that I sometimes rock on a, on, on the odd day, and it, it upsets me when people touch it. But, yeah, I think um, the, the, there's, like, tea houses down there, there's restaurants mm. and stuff, uh, which will only be open for the geisha, their clients and residents of the area. What does a modern geisha do, Chris? I'm, I am so uh. not... <clears throat> not across what a geisha is, what they do, what they did. I, I realised, like, back in the day, it was a bit more murky, poss- possibly, but it was just mm. these talented... Now are they just talented women? I don't know. I just don't know. They're basically it's, entertainers. It's, it... Entertainers, right. and they can sing and dance and right. uh, recite haikus and play instruments. They're supposed mm. to be very good at uh, talking to people and, of course, they have the up and the hair. And they're very nicely dressed. And I met one, mm. uh, last time I saw one or met one, spoke to one was a year ago. And she was a geisha in training like a Michael. Um, and she really didn't enjoy her job. It was kind of awkward. I was like, you must love this. And she was like, I hate this. And I don't know why I did this. And I was like, oh, right. that's, that's not the way I thought this conversation would go. And it got a bit mm. depressing. It It is tough. It does sound like quite a hard job. And you've got to be mm. the right person for it. Quite sociable. Right. Um, and she got into it because she was attracted to the sort of artistic aspect of it. Um, yeah. You know, it's, is it, do you have you like, know. is it like a high status job? Is it like, because obviously entertainer isn't always a high status job. So is it just kind of like a cut above being like a, a lounge singer or, I don't know, a, a <laughs> snack bar host or I don't know how it all kind of fits together. I guess so. I mean, the way geisha work is uh, to meet one often in these sort of special exclusive clubs you've got to be recommended by someone else. Um, right. So in the situation where I'm at the Geisha, a local Kyoto businessman took me to this place and they were there kind mm. of thing. And that's the only way, you know. I think they right. do like crappy tourist experiences that probably aren't the real thing because it is yeah. very like okay. exclusive. It's very like yeah, yeah, yeah. you've got to be a local or very, very right. rich. I, I learned that for $100,000, you can hire like all the Geisha in Kyoto and all the geisha you could eat. Club. <laughs> all the geisha and all a tabi All the geisha, yeah. Geisha tabi hordai. Geisha hordai. <laughs> no, I was, I, who was I speaking to? Somebody was like looking to hire all the geisha. Um, mm. Oh, as a person I know who does like high end holidays for like billionaires. Right. And okay. she was like, this guy wanted to hire all the geisha, like this Russian oligarch or something. Mm. And it was like a quarter of a million, I think. It was, it was, it right. was a lot for it's a, a lot, normal yeah. person. But pocket mm. change to a Russian oligarch, and he was mm. like, "I want the geisha, all geisha. I give money." And like, she was like, "All right, two hundred fifty grand." And for that fee, you get like all the geisha you can eat. A football team up. worth is worth worth of geisha. Do they like? Do, are they com- competing? Are they just doing singing different songs over the top of each other? How, what do you do with so many geisha? You. That's a very good question. Uh, you have a rap off. You have a rap off with all your favourite mm. geisha. I don't a know. Ra- a geisha rap battle. A geisha rap battle. That's yeah. what you do when you're a billionaire. The Dueling the shamisen. I have to reiterate. This was like 250 grand, I think, for like two hours as well. This was right. like a whole a whole day. So to- of geisha. Tottle onto the yacht and then tottle off again. I, the, the, I like in this news story. It says that um, I don't like. It's horrible. But before <laughs> the pandemic, people were also reported to pull out geisha's hair ornaments and hit yeah. them with cigarette butts. Bastards. Hit them with cigarette. What is flicking a ciggy? Flicking a tab at a, a, a geisha. What are you doing all day? I flicked a tab at a geisha. <laughs> What's wrong it's with awful. you? It's kind of like you find it hard to believe these stories to some extent. Like the the difference between. Mm. I mean, I I've seen geisha being harassed by people taking photos and right. you know getting close to them and treating them like they're objects or theme park rides rather than people. Mm. And uh, you know what it, we and, need. It's not just Western tourists as well. Geisha tunnel. We just need a geisha tunnel. Geisha tunnel. Around Kyoto. A private metro. They clutter around on their wooden shoes (laughs) underground. But, (laughs) you know, it's bad. It's bad. And, 
Mm. You know, I was speaking to someone in Kyoto the other day, and they were like, "I know, I saw a geisha having their kimono like grabbed, and kimonos cost you know like six thousand dollars, often priceless." And right. um, yeah, it was just really abhorrent behaviour. And so mm. I completely understand, even though I'm gutted that uh, this area will now become a bit more inaccessible yeah. and exclusive. Uh, I think it's probably a good idea because Kyoto needs to hold on to those traditions and in a way that's authentic, you know, Japan has got such a, a fascinating, deep, rich culture that makes it such a brilliant place to explore and visit. But by having so many tourists come and experience it, it does risk degrading it somewhat and turning it mm. into a commodity, right? And basically mm. selling it out a little bit. So uh, by basically putting a barrier there and keeping people away from it, hopefully uh, maintains geisha culture and stops, uh, you know, these women from being harassed by absolute pricks walking around Kyoto, essentially. Mm. In it. What we need it, is Pete. physically imposing geisha. Maybe some like with very swords. muscular male geisha. I just think, Chris, with your kind of like, you've got quite thick hair and quite dark <laughs> hair, we just sort of comb it up a bit. You know, get a bit of white, get a bit of white makeup on, and you could be like the like the the, the geisha man of, the geisha of, of man. Kyoto, just going around filling people in with a stick and a sword a and a dream. And a sword. I will protect yeah. Gion. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. <laughs> Um, but I think people are going to be a bit worried about this, like, oh, does that mean I can't go to Gion? No, don't worry mm. about that. It really is quite a limited They'll area. They'll tell you. They'll, They'll tell you be, where you yeah, can't you'll, you'll know. It's basically yeah, just yeah. some alleyways. And I don't mm. even know how they're going to implement it because those alleyways have lots of restaurants and bars. Right. And are they all going to die now because there's no tourists? I don't know how it's going to work. Knows. It'll be interesting that to big, see. That big, that big Starbucks in the centre of uh, town. <laughs> they do have a big Starbucks. Yeah, it's a one that blends in with the 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 city as well. Mm. Like I, yeah. I walked past that Starbucks with Natsuki, and he didn't realise it was a Starbucks. So I had to be like Starbucks desk, and he was like, because it was like a wooden <laughs> Starbucks logo. It looked really cool. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Nice. Kyoto Starbucks is best Starbucks. Clearly, mm. uh, we're back to the moment, guys. With your stories, comments, and questions over in the fax machine. Wow. Now we're back with the fax machine. What have we got this week from our listeners? Mr. Dawson, fill us in. Harold has got in touch. Uh, hello, charismatic Chris and prosperous Pete. My name is Harold and I'm from the Netherlands. Last December, I turned 30. Many happy returns. Harold, uh, and I thought now would be a good time to take that nice big trip to Japan we all dream of having. I will be going for three and a half weeks in March. Ooh. I'm a long time watcher of the channel and listener of the podcast, so I'd like to think that I know a little bit about uh, Japan already. Humble brag. But of course, with Chris living in Japan for so long, he is the expert, of course. So my question is for you two is uh, what is the best combination Bini chain overall, considering all factors like service, price, food, etc. Look forward to hearing from you two. Kind regards, Harold. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. <laughs> it is I, tough. It, it literally shifts around different things. Right. Family Mart does have Family Mart chicken, which alone mm. should let them win. Yeah, tip but the scales. Coffee's not as good as Seven Eleven, in my opinion. But right. Lawson have Karyagi Kun, which is like little chicken nuggets of different flavours and there's so many Aww. fun flavours and you feel less guilty than when you eat family marked chicken. Mm. So I'm I'm edging towards Lawson. And all Lawson have like in the last two years they like completely revamped their stores with original products that are just really good. Crisps, chocolate, etc. Mm. So Lawson's Lawson gets my vote. What do you think, mate? When you I came like here last the year? Uniforms I like the uniforms in Lawson. I like uh, the blue and white of Lawson. I like, uh, yeah, Family Chicky does tip it, doesn't it? It really does. Um, I would say that 7-Eleven used to be the, the top dog. When I saw 7-Eleven, I was like, that's the best one because that was the only place where you could get cash out as a foreigner. And um, But now it's not mm. quite so much the kind of American sort of European embassy anymore because you can't get money out pretty much anywhere um so i think uh yeah i think lawson has a nice mixture of friendly staff um <laughs> uh, uh good uniforms great food um lots of coolish and also like little kind of like figurines you can buy sometimes i mm. bought a lot of pokemon cards for friends and family members uh not family members my family have no concept of what <laughs> pokemon <laughs> is god maybe that's what i should do drive up five hours to hartlepool and just explain Pikachu to my mum and dad. Well, imagine if I just sat there and said, "Mum, Dad, I've got something momentous to talk to you about." 
there are pocket monsters in this world and you need to know about them. And I just basically <laughs> detailed the first 60 Pokemon, even though I have no interest in Pokemon. Imagine if I just sat down and went, and my mum and dad would be like, why are you telling us this? We're not inter- Why are you telling us this? I, I, have you had a head injury? And I just sat down and I said, I, I, I spoke with the solemnity of a man who was explaining religion. And I just started talking about Pokemon, even though I have no interest in Pokemon. <laughs> that would be an interesting waste of time. Pokemon, Digimon, all the fucking monsters. Yeah, all monsters. the monsters. All the monsters. My God. Yep. My God. We got mm. one here from Eric from Sweden. He says, LA gamer Chris and likable Pete. <laughs> what is that, Eric? Whoa. I heard Whoa. that Chris recently. <laughs> you are the gamer, not me. Uh, I heard that. <laughs> I love this, right? Recently, I played Ghost of Tsushima. I talked about yes. it publicly, and everyone thinks I'm a gamer now. Uh, Chris, I heard recently you finished uh, playing Ghost of Tsushima and gave it a lot of praise. I think one of the things that makes it such an atmospheric and immersive game is its Japanese setting. This led me to wonder if there are any other good games set in Japan. I previously played the Judgment series, which I really enjoyed, but I'd like to find more games that are based in Japan. Any recommendations? Love the podcast. Eric from Sweden. I know there's Ooh. Ghostwire Tokyo, but I've heard it's a bit there. Right. I You're the gamer, played Ghostwire <laughs> Tokyo, and it's a beautiful... I only played the first few minutes, to be honest, and it was uh, beautifully realized um and a fantastic rendition of i only basically i knew it was based around shibuya mm. um and very much like persona i think which one of the personas was based in shibuya um i just like shibuya chris i think it's just I a vibe and so so i, so I got ghostwire tokyo just to have a wander around um, shibuya and it's a beautifully realized um version um of of, of well, shibuya better than I'm... like yakuza ever managed better than um shenmu ever managed of course, um, Yakuza. So, yeah. I mean, Yakuza is like, I, I think the dynamic between <laughs> Ghost of Tsushima versus Yakuza, very different looking gaming world there. I mean, I, I literally mm. just completed Ghost of Tsushima last week and the yeah. game is stunning. I must say, though, it doesn't really look like Japan at all. It's kind of like this idealistic, w- wonderful looking mm. Japan. The scenery looks more like the scenery you'd find in like Idaho or Montana yeah. in North America, actually. Uh, with like Japanese buildings and castles and aesthetic, yeah. but it certainly made me appreciate Japan more. Like one of the reasons I went to Kyoto the other week was because I wanted to be like I wanted to be in Ghost of Tsushima so bad, and that was the closest I could get to it. And I found a little temple, a little garden uh, that looked a bit like it, and I was like, "Here we are." And then, you know, I, then I played Yakuza and <laughs> smashed up a shop. But I, yeah, yeah, I think that's that's your best bet. Do that. I, I I don't know. I I mean, um, Shenmue was always the thing that made me want to go to Japan back in the day on the Dreamcast. Um, uh, is it Ria Suzuki? Is that it? Or am I thinking of? Is he the guy of um, Yakuza? Either way, um, Shenmue back in Dreamcast time uh, used to mm. uh, got me excited about going to Japan and you know wandering the back streets of of, of Tokyo, um, like the more kind of residential areas, uh, very much um, ticked a lot of boxes for me when it comes to uh, remembering how good that game was and how I had a lot more spare time back then <laughs> to go for a thirty second drinking animation from a from a, uh, a vending machine. Um, yeah, I think and, and anything like that. Um, there, there's also a uh, I noticed mm. um, on the on the Amiga. If you get yourself an Amiga uh, emulator, uh, Chris, you've got um, uh, James no Clavell's um, Shogun. Uh, wow. If you want a little, it looks like a um, a typing uh, adventure. Where you got to, you know, wander around with your <laughs> soft head. People. Enter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> boil alive. Yeah, Chris. <laughs> Enter to boil character alive. Yeah. I uh, all this talk of Shibuya. I'm I'm going there after this podcast. I'm going to walk Shibuya! the back streets of Shibuya yes. to live the Pete Donaldson dream. One last question oh, uh, from gosh. Jim Bob, who says, "Is Wacky Weekends gone? It's been ages. Is Wacky Weekends gone? Uh, I'm actually filming that tomorrow." Got a wacky weekend with Connor, making it up to Connor for the camping trip debacle <laughs> from once hell. and for all. It's coming. Oh. It's, I'm filming it tomorrow. Hopefully, it'll be out like later in the week. Keep an eye mm. out for that. Keep an eye out for Connor. Hopefully, what I've got planned turns out all right. It yeah. won't be worse li- than the original. I like these little short um, shot. I mean, obviously, it sounds like an absolute put up job, but um, Jim Bob Mago <laughs> is a person on YouTube, so uh, yeah, th- um, I-, I like these little sort of mini questions because they uh, mini question. Know, people want to know. People want to know what you're up to, Chris, and I can't be asked to ask you, so they're gonna have to well, ask yeah. you. 
People want to know, <laughs> is Wacky Weekend yeah. gone? No, Wacky Weekend is coming back. For now, guys, keep the stories, questions, comments coming into to <laughs> Podcast at gmail.com or comment here on YouTube if you're watching. But for now, have yourself a great few days. We'll see you right back here. Now do it all over again on the Abroad Japan Podcast. Bye for now.